We heard the red salmon fishing in Seward was good, so we headed that direction. A few things you'll see seemingly all the time are glaciers and moose. You also see bald eagles all the time as well, although this one may think he's a seagull. The town of Seward runs many campgrounds right on the water with amazing views of mountains all around. If you'll be fishing, these are great places to settle in for a few days. We struck out on our first day of fishing, but on our second day, we did very well with three. It's so red. It's amazingly red, like intense, intense orange. Wow. With a stock refrigerator with a few days of salmon, we headed out to a quieter campground for the weekend. During the weekends, the folks from Anchorage flood any prime fishing area, so it's best to avoid the supposed combat fishing that occurs and just get away. We've had so much salmon that we've been able to experiment with different ways to cook. Today we did it over the fire in aluminum foil with, well this had a different glaze, but the other one we had was just salmon, a little bit of oil, and then onion slices as well as lemon slices on top and a little salt and pepper and it came out delicious and by the way anybody coming to alaska should buy one of these instant read thermometers i didn't know these existed until a few weeks ago or actually a couple months ago but 0.5 seconds that's how quickly it reads it you put it in and you get the temperature right away you don't have to stand there and wait so super nice to have yeah it's 56 degrees out right now on monday we returned and managed to catch Four. We kept one and had the three big ones filleted, frozen, and shipped to my sister. In town, there are two spots that offer free public access to their fish cleaning stations, which makes life much easier. Thanks, J-Docs. The next morning, we wanted just one salmon, and amazingly, we got one within 30 minutes of fishing. That meant we had the rest of the day to sightsee with a trip to Exit Glacier in Kenai Fjords National Park. Good morning, we're here at Seward at Kenai Ford National Park, and we're about to hike up to Exit Glacier. We're not hiking to Exit Glacier, we're hiking up to, I guess there's like a cliff point. And after that, there's a lot of snow. So we're gonna stop there and come back. It's still almost a five mile round trip and it's 2,500 feet of gain. It's quite a bit of gain. So I'll show you the map right here, right here real quickly. Is there bears around? There's a sow, so a, um, okay. What's the sow? A sow is a female bear with two cubs. Is it black or? We made it. To this point we're heading up and we're gonna go past marmot meadows i guess there's a little bit of snow and then top of the cliffs and there's a bunch of snow here and they say it's avalanche warning so we won't go past there but from here to here's a mile and another thousand feet super nice this is the most elevation game we'll have hiked since coming to alaska because we've mostly been like fishing and stuff right now i don't know if you, know if you can hear but here thrushes singing. I guess thrushes come up here during the summer from who knows where but I find that the thrushes have some of the best singing from a bird. Well, we're starting up now. I am wearing this jacket. It's like 60 degrees maybe and it's sunny and it's warm in the sun and I know as soon as we start climbing oh, I'll be sweating so I'm gonna take this jacket off. See, green tunnels exist in Alaska as well. It's just not for very long. We're working our way up and now we've hit snow. There's a lot more snow further up, but we're gonna head over to Mammoth Meadows 
the viewpoint area and uh, check out the glacier. We should be right above it, really. Not above it, but somewhere in the middle. We've made it to Mammoth Meadows, somewhere around there. And there's another danger sign here about snow and all this. But there's Exit Glacier and there's actually a bunch of people. I know they do guided tours and stuff. They're actually traversing that way. It's really cool as you can see the crevasses down down low. Um, I think if we go further, we're just gonna be stuck in the more vegetation. So I don't know how much further we should go. Alright folks, oh pretty cool. You can see the parking lot and the road out there. We tried to go up, but we decided we're just gonna turn around because it's already four o'clock and we got salmon to cook and eat that we cooked cut uh, that we caught this morning. And um you have to go up this and we think that's the trail right there. The catch is coming down it's just gonna be a slushy mess. You can see paths where people glissaded, but uh let me show you this here. People glissaded down this and you can see, you can kind of see where they stopped, but the trail is actually right here. So I think people went much further than they intended. So, and they could see the trail as they came down. So we'll just go down. We don't have any kind of traction aids and uh, going down even this little bit of snow, slushy, slippery snow is annoying. All right, time to go back to the car. Yeah, this morning we're here at Seward and this morning went out to go fishing. We figured we're gonna leave tomorrow and we just need one salmon to hold us over for several days. We don't have a freezer, so we try to eat the, any fish we catch within two days. So one salmon out here, one sockeye salmon lasts us three meals, like six portions. So by catching one today, this morning we can actually last till tomorrow probably tomorrow evening so it's pretty nice we're gonna finish up with that um yesterday we actually went out there same spot and fished for maybe four or five hours yesterday was a story to tell i caught one in the morning and it was great and then during one of my reels the pool broke and then all of a sudden the people to the left and right of me, immediate left and right, they both caught one, like immediately. So all I could think of was running into town, buying a new pole and coming back out there. But when I went out there again, it was kind of slow, but uh, I did manage to catch three more yesterday morning. So I mailed three to my sister, 7.4 pounds. They, uh, they'll they freeze dry it, or they'll not freeze dry it, they'll freeze it and then chip it for you. It doesn't come, cheaply for that service but uh pretty nice so they're gonna get seven and a half pounds of super fresh sockeye salmon in the mail thursday uh they're gonna ship wednesday super nice come to seward boy i gotta tell you getting spoiled we've been eating salmon for at least every dinner for like a week now i think that's spoiled So I believe it's January 18th or 17th, somewhere around there. And this trail is still, still has a lot of snow on it. But if there isn't snow, it's pretty muddy. But fortunately, when you get to the Mammoth Meadows portion, it's not too bad. There's little bits of mud, but overall not too bad. And you won't really get this stuff either, the snow.
caught a bunch of fish right around here but it seems like the fish tend to go into this cove and they swirl around a little and go back so the people around there have the most luck i think those are the best spots and the so yeah it's generally good though all through here and they stay pretty shallow maybe 20 feet or so every once in a while you catch one further out but you'll see in the cove there's more like that that cove but back there that's another good area right where it curves i think the fish tend to come in swirl and some go out i've seen a lot of people catch stuff out there and that's why there's a bunch of people on the beach out there it's also easier on a beach when you catch one to try to pull it in it's it's more difficult when the water is higher because you're in the rocks and you got to try to get it onto the rocks before it gets off the hook but right now it's uh it's supposedly it's pretty slow oh looks like someone got one over here so the, the ideal thing is when you hook something is there's gonna be a school so everyone should be casting like crazy and you gotta like back it up it's a lot easier to walk back with it than to try to reel it in and then once you get it to somewhere where it can't flop back, then you could approach and work on it. They're fighters though. One fish. What I can't get over is they're fishing here and you just have these amazing views. Kenya I Forge National Park is right on the other side of the bay and it just is snow-capped mountains and pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And Seward is the town right over there. Just amazing. Beautiful views here. There's a fishing spot. It's amazing. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but in the beach you can see a lot of people are just sitting, sitting around. There's big gaps in the water. Generally when it's really quiet, people just sit back and watch some other people fish. There's always people, some people fishing. Because if there's nothing going on, there's no fish. And as soon as people start catching them, everyone will stand up and try because there'd be schools going around. But also when you look through here, I did that too. You just see people just standing around, looking around, not doing much of anything because they're just waiting for some action to kick in. In fact, it looks like there's some major splashing going on over there. Oh yeah, the guy in the far left got one. I think he just got here. Yeah, he just got here. He's reeling it in, walking it back. Yeah, I think he just got here. Amazing. Uh-oh. Someone gonna help him? I think it got off the line just at that last minute, but people are helping him. Oh, they're doing the old kick. Why, they, why do people kick fish? It's weird. Just like that, one person caught one off to the side and several minutes later, two people got him at the same time. So there's like a little school going through. I'm surprised so many people are still sitting back. They should be casting right away. But two at the same time, also another guy got one, but it got away. That's three fish at the same time. When it's busy, it's busy and it gets exciting. It's almost nonstop action now. Two people caught one over there, or one each. And then he caught one and she caught one at the same time. There's a bald eagle flying around in the water and this guy just hooked one and he's dragging it in now. It's just like constant bites happening. Wow. And over there, there are two people that caught him at, they hooked him at the same time that they're dragging him onto the beach. It's just non-stop action here. The salmon are running. June 18th, 19th, something like that. It's pretty crazy it's active right now later in the day and towards higher tide there will be people lined up on the rocks all around packed on the beach on all these rocks and it just goes all the way on people filling in everything and it just goes all the way down it goes down to there's like a private area kind of near where that red crane is but it just filled with people fishing all throughout it's insane that's our last day in Seward. Um, this morning we just came to watch people fish and just kind of use the internet team to make some calls. But we're taking off. We're going to head over to Russian River, I think, just do a hike there. We're not going to fish there. We heard it's really crowded. But we kind of want, want to see the sockeye swimming upriver there. So we'll check that out. But 
it's been really fun just coming here to watch people fish if you're into fishing it's uh it's pretty fun it's just fun seeing the excitement when like a group of people starts catching something and then moves on but all right thanks for watching you all take care and uh yeah come on out to seward someday